Hi, Matt Watson here from CarWow. So I'm sitting in an Alfa Romeo Giulio Quadrifoglio GTA N. And I'm going to time it around a tight circuit and compare the lap time to a Porsche 911 GT3 and see which is the quickest. Before we get into that, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you won't miss a single upload. Also, if you're thinking about buying a new car, click on the pop-out banner up there to check out CarWow. So much money you can save. Make sure you're paying a fair price. Alternatively, at a later date, you can simply Google Help Me CarWow. And my team and I will help you choose the right car for you. You get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Okay, let me tell you about this Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. It ain't just any Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio though. So what they've done with this car, this GTA M, is they've widened the track. They've increased the power of the engine. They've given it uprated suspension. They've given it common ceramic brakes. They've reduced the weight with carbon fiber. On this M version, you can adjust the aero on it. They've also gone and removed the rear seats and put a roll cage in there. I mean, it's full on nutty as hell. They're only going to make 500 of these M's. It's limited edition. I better not crash it. Oh, let me tell you about the engine. 2.9 litre twin turbo V6. Oh, yes. Beautiful sound it makes. Drives the rear wheels only. Right, an eight-speed torque converter automatic gearbox. Big paddle shifters. It's an absolute beast of a thing. Looks amazing. Carbon on it. Tires are super sticky as well. It's expensive. Looking around £150,000. Let's do a flying lap. Come on, let's do it. Here comes the starting line now. Right, hold on the brakes. Oh yes, carbon ceramics doing their job nicely. Chuck it in, lots of front end bite here. That's good, that is. <laughs> you can't turn the stability all the way off in this car, which is a bit annoying. Oh, it just hooks up though. It just grips so hard. It really does. Just chasing the car, come on. Rev it out. Oh my God, this just, yeah, it feels like a racing car, this thing. Oh, I hit the limiter a bit there, hopefully. That won't affect my lap time. Oh, over the curbs. Getting the power on here. <laughs> I could feel a fly land on my bloody cheek then. I'm trying to concentrate, fly. Oh my God, come on. Get on the power. Rev it out. Oh, oh here we go. Here's the finish line now. Ooh. Felt a bloody creature just land on my face. Oh, a bit annoying. I just clicked the limiter there. It's quite hard because I've got these cameras like, in the way. I can't hear because I've got my helmet on and it's got like headphones in there. So I can't quite tell where I am. Hopefully it hasn't affected my lap time. Okay then, come on. What was the time? 47. 47. 6. 47, 6. Wow. There you go. So I've now jumped into the GT3 and oh my God. This thing will start from £128,000. You get a motorsport derived, four litre, flat six, naturally aspirated engine, revs all the way up to 9,000 RPM. It's just nuts and it sounds amazing. It puts out 510 horsepower, 470 newton meters. This is just rear wheel drive, tires, Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s, Another thing about this car, we've got a limited slip diff over the rear axle. So much has been done to the suspension, so upgraded springs, dampers, you've got upgraded anti-roll bars. This car's got the carbon ceramic brakes. It's also got the half cage. One of the big things about this car though, is the fact that it has double wishbone suspension at the front. Whereas in the past, all Rogue 911s have had McPherson strut, and that should help reduce the understeer. And it does feel blooming precise, this car. It just turns in so sharply. It's absolutely nuts. Why is the highlight? Chassis engine, chassis engine brakes. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. We're gonna find out though. Here we go, let's do a flying lap. Oh, I'm a little bit frightened. Come on! Whoa! Ooh, so much feel through those brakes. Carbon ceramics can be a bit on or off. These are pretty lovely. Oh my God, you can feel it just hopping around. It's like a blooming racing car. I mean, just the way it turns in is nuts. Absolutely blooming nuts. Oh, you can just <laughs> chase the curves on this thing. It's just crazy. The engine is such a highlight. The gearbox, seven speed dual clutch, is different to the one in the normal Carrera. Oh, it's nuts. The whole package is just a racing car. Here we go. Last turn, come on. Chase the car, rip it all the way. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> I think I might have pinged it a little bit off the limiter. Hopefully that won't have affected my time because I was going over the start finish line at that point. What time did I do? One absolutely insane experience. Come on then. 
46. Yeah, come on, low, low, low. One. 46, one. Anyway, we need to launch the cars and compare the straight line performance. So yeah, let's do that. Right, let's see what the GT3 will do. 0 to 60, 0 to 100, and 100 to 0. Let's do it. <laughs> Oh my god, it hooks up, the gear changes are brutal. Oh, -ho! it's quick. Blimey, that was well quick. Love that. Not 60, 3.46. Not 100, 7.5. And 100 to zero, 269 feet in 3.96 seconds. Wow. Okay, what will this Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio GTAM do from 0 to 60, 0 to 100, and 100 to naught? Let's do it. That's not going to work. I'm going to have to launch it probably with the stability on. Not ideal. Right, let's try again. That's better. Oh, it actually managed the power really well then. Okay. God, oh, brakes hard. Oh. Right, let's see what we got. So, 0 to 60. 4.25 seconds, 0 to 108.27 seconds, and it stopped in 298 feet. I'm gonna do that again. Okay, let's do it. Oh. Okay, what do we get? 0 to 60, 4.25. 2.4 seconds, 0 to 100, 8.28 seconds, and it stopped in 285 feet. Feet? Foot? 285 foot? Feet? I don't know, 285 feet? What's wrong with me? <laughs> this guy sends you mad. Okay, that took 4.28 seconds. Now, I've put the distance actually in meters there for all you metric people. Oh, yeah, that was interesting comparing it to the GT3. I do think that the GT3 is a more out and out racing car really for the road. This is more just a very, very interesting hardcore saloon car, which is no longer useful as a saloon car. <laughs> but there's something really special about it. The noise that engine makes is just lovely. The feel of it, the look of it, it's a great thing. But for me, I think I'd save some cash and get a GT3. Still, I do love this.